Dairy at uh, Murph and uh, just checking things out. He's uh, brought quite a collection of, uh, of items to display. Uh, and as you know, he's a uh, go home or, or go big, go big or, go or go home. home. Let's get it We're right. Go, uh, how about go extreme or go home? That's Follow right. Me. World's largest Joel bot, 67% Joel. Although Amazing. I hear somebody's working on 100%. <laughs> wow. World's smallest Joel bot. Oh my God. Gonna zoom in, way in, way in, and there he is. That is Itty bitty micro Joel. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I love showcasing artists. So you have Luby. She makes her sorceress, her bauble, her dragons. Paul Feeney made the genie bottle. Bugman 140 made the, the twist phase stuff. Mech G made these beautiful scale SDs rockets. Fantasy Graph makes gorgeous models to print. Amazing. I love finding cool stuff for people to, to show off. Totoros, pumpkins, it's just fun stuff. And That's functional great. parts. Parts for rockets. Flying rockets. These are going to fly. Of course, we're going to join SpaceX. Yeah. Is that baby actually going to launch? That one, that part might launch. I'll make this part out of paper tube. Okay. And I'm actually going to make a kit out of this size. So this will eventually be a flying kit that I'll offer. Wow. Wow. This will be a paper tube. I'll oversize the fins. You'll have these decorative parts 3D printed that you can add to it. Then you'll have a flying BFR. Sweet. That is just too cool. I found this just before coming to Murph. I had to crank up the speed to get it to print in time. <laughs> this is going to be a flying rocket. Wow. That's wow. a hollow. That is. The nose comes off. That's a lot of rocket. I'm going to put a G motor in this. A G motor? Screen. That's the great big jumbo one. Yeah. It needed it. It's pretty heavy. Man. But man. That's going to be cool. That is cool. Wow. All right, brother. Thank you for your time. Have a great day, man. Appreciate it. Happy victims. That's right. That is so cool. So how tall is this monster going to be? Six feet. Yeah, six foot three, I think. Six foot three. Wow. A little over six feet. So you, hopefully with a little bit of finagling, you'll still get it through the door. Hey guys, say hello to the thing of, to uh, YouTube. Hi. Hey YouTube. <laughs> At the uh, Capricorn booth, one of my favorite vendors. You guys are not using Capricorn Bowden tubing on your printers. You are making a big mistake because it just makes a world of difference. Thank you very much. Hey, thank you guys.
That's cool. Is it your design? No, I just 3D printed them out. Wow. That is really neat. <laughs> wow. Hey guys, say hello to YouTube. Hi there. And the lady with the cookies. Hello. How's the cookies going? Good. Awesome. Awesome. Say hi to YouTube, guys. Guys, this is the uh, show special that I just bought. This is from uh, CNC, or uh, See Me CNC. Uh, it's a show special for $1,800. And it is an amazing looking printer. And uh, we're buying this because my wife really liked it. So if you guys find a wife like mine, you better hang on to her because uh, she's got a great eye. And this is the gentleman that sold it to me. Your name again, sir? Andy. Andy? Jim Franks. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So they're doing the show special. Uh, shipping is free of charge. Uh, apparently so popular that they sold out of the ones they had in stock here. And uh, so really looking forward to this. It looks like a beautiful machine. Uh, Love it. Give me a few of the, the features again. Over 500 millimeter tall build volume. Over 290 to diameter. Can Use to the whole print bed, AC heated bed, Duet 3D, 32-bit Wi-Fi controller board, precision ground linear rails. You said it's, it's a beast of machine. It's all metal and it weighs a ton. You said it's a uh, um, auto leveling. And auto leveling. Beautiful. Takes Beautiful. care of itself. You just take the level and go print. 
So there it is, guys. This is going to be on the channel. We're going to do a build of this online so you guys can check it out and see if this is a piece of equipment you guys would like to have as well. Say hi to YouTube. Hi. S is pretty popular too. That one's got another set of linear rods on that side. It doesn't have this problem. I probably have some here. It just it doesn't have to be easy. Yeah, I I put it on my plate block. And surprisingly, the glue that they use on that is something that we used to use for our work. Say hello to YouTube. Hello YouTube. How's it going? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. Tell me what this uh, what this monster is. So this is an old Z Corp Z402. Um, it actually came out in 1997. Um, I actually managed to get one at an auction, so I took it, I scrapped all the electronics out of it, and I replaced it with a laser. But then I needed some material to run on it, right? So what I did was I actually went out and I bought 50 pounds of red glitter. And I just threw that into this machine. That's amazing. After a bit of um, material property evaluation and kind of doing some testing on it, I managed to actually get it printing somewhat reliably. Uh, the strength of the parts is not the best. It kind of just crumbles when you squeeze on it, but it can do some pretty intricate little bits and pieces. Wow. So, and what kind of material is that? Uh, glitter. I actually want to figure it out, but P, um, it's glitter is actually PET, like standard play. Right. Terrifying. Right. With um, aluminum on top of that, and then some polyester on top of that to color it. So basically, what it's doing is just melting the PET together. That is amazing. And you're getting a lot of precision. I noticed uh, earlier you stuck your hand down into the material and dug a part out. Yep. So you're able to solidify the materials like down in the middle of the, the bed of glitter. Yeah, so actually how this process works is it starts off lasering a layer together. Now at some point in the middle of me talking, because I know it's going to do that, uh, it's going to stop printing, come back this way. This layer will drop down about 0.4 at the layer height for this machine. Come down 0.4. This layer, um, there's actually another axis here, a feed axis that'll come up about 0.6. Then there's a roller underneath here that rolls. It's counter-rotating roller, so it rolls in the opposite direction it's moving. Okay. So that roller will turn on, and then it just moves this axis along to spread a new layer of powder. Wow. Dump the excess down the hole. See, wow. There it goes. That's going in. So just finish lasering the part. Goes back, picks up, roller on. You can see it picking up powder on the inside of that track there. It goes, brings it, spreads it back over, and then drops it down the hole, the excess, combs that excess, and then begins the laser in the next layer. Now, is this your design? I mean, I've never seen anything even close to this. So, the design, the point on what, depends on what you mean by my design. The actual machine itself is obviously a Z Corp, but I designed the electronics, all the electronics, and I kind of hijacked some of the controls for it because it doesn't use stepper motors like a standard, uh, uh, standard. 3D printer would use, and right. these DC motors with encoders. So you need to take the stepper motor signals and find a way to act, apply some control theory to actually control these motors. Wow, wow. That is very, very innovative, man. Well, thank you very much for your time. We appreciate it. So how long did this thing take to print? Uh, I it's hard to say. This has been sort of going on for about two years now. Wow. Um, and there's been different complications along the way. So the main body was all printed by a company out in California. Oh, is that right? Except for eight pieces. Because the problem is I could not make this as a one-hole dragon. I would never be able to move it. Right, so right. So I had to design these pieces that would lock and unlock. I didn't get around to it quick enough, and so the boss of the company who I'm friends with was on a business trip. He had hired a new employee. The new employee found this box and thought it was garbage and threw it out. Oh, it was no. all these body pieces. Oh, my so gosh. I had to do it all on my own. 
each of these body pieces could take easily anywhere from five hours to about nine and a half hours. Sure, absolutely. 3D printing is a slow, slow yeah. process. And then I had uh, a guy out in the state of Washington that printed up the main parts of the head. The head has three parts on the top, two on the bottom. And the, the core of the feet here, he printed those as well, but he ran out of green, so one of them is white. So there I used liquid plastic to paint over to, to try to make all the feet look the same. Nice, nice. It gave it a nice gloss too. Yep. So what I actually paint with the liquid plastic, like the inside of the mouth, the tongue is painted with liquid plastic. This flying creature here is completely painted with liquid plastic. I mean, some of it is the original blues and greens, but others have been added on. The yellowish green was added on. The tail part that is has a yellow look as well as a green and a blue look to it. All of this piece right here is actually white. So gotcha. I used liquid plastic blue and then a green and then a yellow to do the colorizing of it. And then what about the electronics in the head? I noticed earlier it was flashing and... Yes. So another guy printed all the color here and then when he did that, he did this in a semi-translucent um, pet, pet G. Okay. And it has LEDs in there. Sweet. So that looks really that good. So I had on yesterday and it cycles through the colors. And nice. So it's another upgrade. And I may, uh, when I do the final assembly of this, I may do one final upgrade and get smoke to come out of the nose. Sweet. Yeah, I noticed uh, one of the dragons yes, that the uh, dragon they did up here. Up there. Yeah, yeah exactly. actually was able to do. Uh, I'm not sure how they're doing it. If it's smoke it's or just steam. A vapor. It's just a vapor. A va like so a, he has a like regular a vape. smoking vape, yeah. and he just sticks it into this one spot, and then it shoots out the nose. Although Very the deal cool. is, they didn't make that dragon. So a buddy of mine goes, "Oh, somebody's got a dragon head that's bigger than yours." And I go, "Yeah, but I have the entire dragon body." That's right. And I designed everything. Wow! Wow! That is cool. Well, thank you very much for your time. You're quite well. Uh, nice beautiful you. piece of work, man. Kurt the bot guy. Thanks a lot. There we go. So everybody say hello to Joe. To Joe. Yeah. Joe has done some really incredible stuff with his uh, 3D printing, and uh, amongst other things that he's uh, doing right now. He has also 3D printed a actual telescope, which is so big that I can't hardly get it into the camera. So except for his optics, everything is literally 3D printed, which is absolutely amazing. How much time did you uh, put into the, uh, to the, uh, the telescope? About three months, and that includes time researching, time uh, ordering pieces, Time spent waiting for pieces to arrive. Um, a big part of it was spent waiting for the lenses, or trying to figure out exactly what lenses I needed and where to get them and ordering them. This piece up here, for example, was fabricated for me by a guy out in Washington, and it took about two weeks to a month to figure out exactly what I needed, how much he was going to charge, actually get it to me and get it installed. Wow. Plus side, it wow. was perfect, so I'm very happy that I worked with him. It just took a while to get here. Yeah, that's an amazing piece of uh, work. So who did all the uh, design work? Did you design all the parts and everything? I didn't, actually. It was designed by a Russian dude and put up on Facebook. He posted the files and he posted a picture of what it was supposed to look like when it was done. No other information. Wow. So I took his files and I reverse engineered all the optical information, uh, figured out what pieces I needed, figured out where to buy them, and um, redid a whole bunch of pieces. I ended up having to change some of the pieces in the head and some of the pieces in the body here in order to fit US made components. And overall, it turned out to work amazingly. And uh, I ended up with a fully functioning Dobsonian telescope. Yeah, it's absolutely gorgeous, man. That's uh, the most unique sweet looking piece of equipment I've seen 3D printed probably ever. Thank you. Thank so, you. It was uh, a lot of work. I'm very happy that it's done and I'm very happy that it works. Fantastic. All right, brother. Thank you for your time. Absolutely. Have a good one. You too.